Good morning, champions. It's good to have you in church today. I'm super excited to be in church for the first time. God, I heard in my spirit that it, God says he wants to reintroduce his name to the nations. I've been super excited about it because everything is in the name of the Lord. His power, his reputation, his character is in that name. Hallelujah. So don't just sit. Don't let the weather steal anything from you. You are not sitting here. This assembly is taking place in the throne room. And God is interested in bringing back to his body that which we have not yet seen or known. That which our minds cannot comprehend. When we talk about the name of the Lord, you and I don't even understand it because there are things we've not seen. And he says, I'm going to begin to give you an encounter with my name. So today is an unusual day. And we are still in the assembly of the God begotten. We're still looking at what it means to be begotten of love. Last week we saw that as, as envoys of God's kindnesses, we are called to be useful to ourselves, to others, and to God. Today we are still on that 1 John 4, 7. And in order to understand what 1 John 4, 7 We'll still go back to 1 Corinthians 13, 4. It said, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Love endures with patience and serenity. That's 1 Corinthians 13, 4. I'm reading from Amplified. Love is kind and thoughtful. We saw this last week. Love is kind. I brought Amplified because love Amplified captures two things that I want to draw our attention to. Love is not jealous or envious. Today's ministry is a call to look inward and examine yourself. Am I envious? Am I jealous? It's so easy to dismiss it like I'm not a jealous person. I cannot be envious. But what's envy? Envy is wanting to possess something that belongs to another person. It's a heart problem. Unlike stealing that you can see it, sometimes envy creeps up on you and you are not aware. And I heard a whisper in my heart saying envy is a violation of trust. Hope I can explain that. So because it's, it's such a creepy, stealthy sin that sometimes we may not even understand, we may not even know we are envious. I came with a mirror. And I'll quickly go through the mirror, just in case you could find yourself there. So if you feel displeased when other people prosper, if you feel small or invisible when people around you are recognized, lifted and celebrated, if you are sad at the blessings and excellence of others, if you are joyful at the news of other people's failure and bad reports, you know there are some people that the only time they say about Simeonam, is when something bad happens. So their God specializes in dishing out evil. If you are comfortable when others are put down and uneasy when they are honored, if people's success makes you feel like a failure, if you sense that someone's growth and development takes away from you, if you pretend to love somebody and make friendly and familiar expressions of admiration to that person just to conceal your jealousy, if you respond to the accomplishments of others by resenting them and despairing within yourself. One of the saddest things I have read in my life is to go online and see people comment on people's marriage invitation. God, when? God, am I a spoon? God, am I a frog? When shall? Veiled envy from the very mouths of men and women who have been begotten of love. God, are you a frog? You just called yourself a frog because you have seen pictures. They have shown you the best edited version of their lives. If you were to exchange yours with them, would you want their lives? So if you respond to the accomplishments of other people by resenting them and despairing within yourself, longing that their success was your own, then envy is calling your name. Or rather, your name is, I will not finish it, you can complete it for me. Envy directly violates the law of love. 
is a violation of your own identity and being. The violation of people's trust and well-being and the violation of God's goodness and righteousness. When you are envious, you are essentially saying you don't count in Christ. You disregard your identity in Christ. You disregard what you have in Christ. You disregard who God is to you. When you are envious of people, you are, you, you are a disaster to the people in your space because nobody is, is safe around an envious person. James understood this. That's why he said when you have envy and selfish and ambition, wherever you find these two, then you are sure to find disorder and every evil practice. So you are never safe around an envious person. And if you are envious, people are not safe around you, including your own children. Envy, when, when, when you are envious, you look God in the eye and violate his righteousness and goodness. Let me, say, let me, let me tell you what envy says. You know God is just. He consistently does what is right, what should be done without partiality or prejudice. Now, when we walk in jealousy and envy, what we do is that we not only question the goodness, the fairness, and the justice of God in our lives, but we resent the expression of his goodness in someone else's life. So we look at God if we are, we are envious and say, yes, you said you are love. Yes, you said you are fair. You said you are good. You said you are just. Well, turns out you lied. That is what you do when you are envious. You look God in the eye and tell him, you, you, are, you lied. You are a liar. You are so partial. Look at Afyong. Look at Eno. Look at Cecilia. After multiple abortions, you gave them husbands and children on time. I've been waiting here for you with this small husband that I'm managing to marry. No child. In that moment of your envy, ingratitude blinds you so much. That you forget that you are the only person in your entire village. That if someone says, come, in English, can understand it. You forget where God has brought you from. You forget the goodness. You forget the embodiment of blessedness that you are. And we sit in church. And when somebody's testimony comes up, we feel, God, when? When shall? Am I a spoon? Am I a frog? Is it in the Bible? When shall you die young? Is that what you are asking him? Or when shall you be buried earlier? Early, is that what you are asking him? Or when shall you walk naked on the road? Is that what you are asking him? God, when? When you say that, you violate everything. You violate his love. You violate his justice. You violate his goodness. You violate whom he has made you to be. You violate the gifts of his son. Our positions is not in riches and of cars and private jets and land. We are rich because in Christ we have everything. God's son came on earth and became man so we could become sons of God. That's everything. That, that's our confidence. So if love does not envy, what does love do? Romans 12, 15 answers it perfectly for us. Love rejoices with those who rejoice and mourns with those who mourn. So today I came to invite us to begin to rejoice. If you're in school, rejoice with that classmate who got the grade you wanted. Yet you studied for an A. But it turns out it's your friend that comes for night class once in a blue moon that had it. Rejoice with her. Rejoice with your friend who got the job you wanted. Rejoice with your family member who got the destiny you would have loved to have. Rejoice with that your neighbor who is getting married this weekend. Don't just say congratulations. Buy something and go and give. Make the marriage a success. That's how you know envy has no hold on you. Rejoice with colleagues whose promotion letters have come in, even if you keep applying every year and every season. Rejoice with those moving into bigger places, bigger, driving bigger cars, flying in private jets. Rejoice with those ones. Rejoice with the women around you popping out babies every year, even when you're, trying to, you're struggling to get pregnant. Because in truly rejoicing, you tell the world, that you are God begotten, that you are begotten of love, that you share the nature of your Father in heaven. But the, the problem is we cannot even rejoice if we do not learn to be grateful, if we do not learn to count our blessings, if we do not learn to look into ourselves and embrace our identity in Christ. So if envy is something you struggle with in this service, 
I want you to sit down and name it. Say, Lord, I struggle with envy. I'm jealous of so-so and so person. I listened to somebody and I felt that person is too young. I should be the one there. Name it and confess it. Intentionally surrender your heart to God. Because envy will rob you of your relationship with God. Rob you of your relationship with people. And rob you of your relationship with yourself. Look inward. Remind yourself what you have in Christ. Who you are in Christ. Envy, if you were here yesterday, as Father was speaking, I just realized, envy is the lot that you have invited on your journey. So in this service, drop that lot. And tell God, I am intentionally separating from this personal lot. And for me, the ultimate that I woke up this morning with is fall in love with God. Embrace his will for you. So much that, you know how you fall in love with God and embrace what God has for you? That you don't want anything that he does not want for you. You are not interested, you do not desire anything that does not have your name on it. No matter how handsome a guy is, no matter how beautiful a woman is, if God says he's not your wife, you absolutely have no interest in it. You want what God, God wants for you. You love what God loves for you. When you walk yourself into that place, then you, when, you, when you allow yourself to come into that place, then you can truly celebrate with those who are celebrating and rejoice with those who are rejoicing. Because it's easy to mourn with those who are mourning. What we struggle with is celebrating with those who celebrate. Please rise, let's make our confessions this morning. Say this with me. I am commissioned to rejoice. I am commissioned to rejoice. I am begotten of love. The love of God is shed abroad in my heart. I rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. The success of another person does not make me feel small. The failure of another does not feel my triumphs. I choose to celebrate all that God is doing in the lives of others. I am empowered to love as Christ loves. I am begotten of love. The Holy Spirit lives in me. He enables me to see the goodness of God in other people's blessings. I take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. I genuinely celebrate and contribute to the success of others. I banish every desire for whatever does not belong to me. I acknowledge God as my provider and my provision. I am begotten of love to manifest love. I am content with my blessings in Christ Jesus. I am aware that my neighbor's success is not my failure. I am not displeased when other people prosper. I am not sad at the blessings and excellence of others. I am not joyful at the news of people's failures. As Christ is, so am I in this world. I am begotten of the one who is love. I have received the love nature of the Father. I am overflowing with mercy and compassion. I am generous and gracious towards all. I am fruitful and useful in relationships. I am comfortable when others are celebrated and honored. I love righteousness and hate wickedness. There is no bitterness of envy and jealousy in me. My life is glorifying God in every area. Say that part again. My life 
is glorifying God in every area. Say, I insert your name. I am the glory of the Lord. My life glorifies God in every area. Amen.